Hello and welcome uh, to the Nick Gambaro Show. I'm Nicholas Gambaro, alongside me, my partner Emilio Ortega. What's up, people? And uh, today on the show, we're going to be discussing a few topics. Uh, top five cities that should have expansion teams, or teams that should be in these cities. Me and Emilio will give our list. Um, we're going to discuss uh, soccer in the United States, always an interesting topic to discuss. And then lastly, we'll wrap it up with, uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting debate, is uh, shortening the NHL, NBA, and MLB seasons. Uh, so we'll discuss that. But first, we'll get into the top five expansion cities when we come back uh, from break. I learned to make lasting friendships with people I still keep in touch with today. Because of camp, I learned about self-esteem. Because of camp, I play guitar. Because of camp, I am sending my kids to camp this summer. I learned that I was the best Tarzan yeller in the camp. <laughs> because of camp, I got a personality. Now I'm... <laughs> because of camp, I turned out just fun. the Nick Gambaro show. Um, our first so our first segment uh, is going to be uh, top five expansion cities. Um, me and Emilio will give our top five or not even in any particular order but just five cities that we think should have uh, professional sports teams in a certain league. Um, Emilio, one city that we always discuss uh, it seems like everyone discusses, especially with uh, NBA fans, and it's a heartbreaking thing um, when the super the, Supersonics yeah, move. Yeah, Seattle, the Seattle Supersonics. I think Seattle deserves an NBA team as well as an NHL team. Um, I, I agree with that. I've been there um, for a soccer game, MLS. They seem to really embrace that, as we all know the 12th men. Uh, Legendary with the Seattle Seahawks right. fans and the Mariners as well in the MLB are well supported. Um, you know, what do you think it could take for Seattle to get uh, an NBA or NHL team there? I think both leagues will have to consider expansion, which means another city may have to go along with it to even up the league. For the NHL, see, the NHL started this with, with Vegas. So if they could, Vegas and um, Vegas and Seattle and move one of the teams that's in Mid America, like maybe move the St. Louis Blues or the Chicago Blackhawks to even it up to the Eastern Conference, that might be feasible. Or move both of them to the Eastern Conference just to even it up. Yeah. That's the only way that that will work. And in the NBA, you might have to add another team because. If you add one team for an expansion, it's going to be an uneven schedule. It's going to be um, kind of like the way baseball was, that the National League had less teams than the American League had more teams, and it's going to be, it's going to create scheduling tasks. Yeah, and I feel like, too, uh, the key arena is still in Seattle. Um, yeah, and but it's I, still up. It is still up. Uh, the old buildings, to me, are the best when we talk about Nassau Coliseum and Oracle Arena you know, that kind of rock and the crowd that can really uh, energize the home team. Um, but I think eventually they will have to build a new arena, um, most likely in downtown Seattle. Or maybe even, they maybe they could find a spot near Safeco Field and CenturyLink Field where they could build an arena and kind of have all the stadiums plus the that arena in the I same think, vicinity. Yeah, that could be, that's almost similar to Cleveland. 
I think I don't I don't know where they have um, their stadium at their the Brown Stadium, but I know that yeah uh, Progressive Field and um, the Quicken Loans Arena you know, right across the street. From yeah, the and I know I think it's only a few blocks away yeah. off First Energy Stadium where the Browns play. It's right on the water, which is really nice, and right next to it is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, Speaking of Cleveland, I have them on my list. I um, think they could support an NHL team. That was my sport, because of course we all know they have the three other sports, the Browns, Indians, Cavaliers, but I think they deserve an NHL team. The way the city and the people support their teams, why not give them a fourth team? NHL is a cold weather city. It could do really well there. And look, eventually you could have an outdoor game there whether it's at Progressive Field where the Indians play or First Energy Stadium where the Browns play. Or, or if you want to go to Cincinnati, Paul Brown Stadium or Great American Ballpark where the Reds play. Very true, and you can have that kind of rivalry with Columbus and maybe even have an outdoor game at Ohio Stadium, yes, which I believe it could sell out. Yeah, like, Ohio, like the campus of Ohio State University, that would sell out. You get easily over 100,000. That would. Another city, and I spoke about this earlier. Sure. St. Louis. Mm -hmm. St. Louis could use another NBA team, uh, could use an NBA team, and the NFL needs to do right by them and bring back a fran and bring a franchise to St. Louis. The fans supported the team. I don't know why they couldn't just get a stadium mm -hmm. deal and keep the Rams in St. Louis, but they need a, they're a city that could do well with all four sports. They, they need an NBA team. And they need and um, they and they need to bring back the NFL. I I agree. I think we know um, after the Rams move, you know the Blues. I think were already supported very well, but I think even more the fans and the people of St. Louis, even if they weren't hockey fans and Blues fans, they got behind the team more because the Rams left only a couple months before uh -huh. the NHL playoffs started. And another city that's been mentioned that needs baseball back, we're going out of the U.S. is the city of Montreal. Yes, I have them on my list as well. I yeah. believe I already have the solution for that, and I think we all have the solution. Mm -hmm. The Tampa Bay Rays have to get out of Tampa Bay. That is a retirement um, minor league area. Florida is more prominently a minor league area for A and double A. I think the Marlins have a shot because of Miami and if they're good, yeah. their fans will show up. But Tampa Bay, they have no fans because in Tampa Bay it's either Boston fans, Yankee fans, or Met fans that live in that area, that, that live in the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. Correct. And I don't think they need a baseball team. I feel like the Buccaneers do well because I feel most The Lightning do well. Very well there. Um, that might, I think the Tampa Bay area might need an NBA team more than they would need a baseball team because that stadium mm -hmm. is atrocious. That should be, that, that, that's a modern day rat trap. It is horrendous. It is horrible. It's, it's, it's a bad optic. The, the acoustics, you hear it on TV, doesn't sound that good because it's so empty. No, and I hear, you know, I agree with you about Miami and also the fact they play now in downtown Miami because they used to play in Miami Gardens where the Dolphins still play only like 20 minutes outside of downtown. I, I think actually a team that could move out of Jacksonville, if the Jacksonville Jaguars can't, because mm -hmm. the fans will support, but if they can't get better, I would consider expanding them. E how about even moving them to St. Louis? That because would, yeah, that would be interesting, the St. Louis Jaguars. They're technically not in the South, but think about the Indianapolis Colts. They're up in the Midwest, in yeah, the northern the, part of the country, but they're still in the division of the that, AFC that's South. That's why I said if I were running the Major League mm -hmm. Baseball, I would do some serious... One, I would go one league and do serious realignment, but we don't have time for that right now. Totally agree, though. Um, another city that I think, I'm trying to see a, a, another city that could use another franchise. Um, I would say if the Buffalo Bills can't thrive in Buffalo, move them to Toronto. 
That would be very interesting. But here's the thing, though. Toronto, they're reconfiguring their field at Rogers Center to get natural grass. And Toronto already has a CFL team, but I think they could use an NFL team. They could to have four major sports because they have the Blue Jays, the Raptors, and the Maple Leafs who all do well there. Yes. You know, the Maple Leafs have stunk for years and years, but of course hockey is their sport and their life there. So That's where one of the NHL headquarters are anyway, it's Toronto. Yeah, they're York. always going to be supported. And they have the MLS there, Toronto FC, who actually do really well in attendance. Yeah. So I'm um, another city. Oh, I wanted to talk to you about, they only have two teams, but uh, Portland, what do you think about if they got an NHL team, that kind of, if Seattle got a team and Vancouver already has the Canucks, it could kind of be a Cascadia, yeah, North so Pacific Northwest rivalry with the three teams. Yeah, that could be. See, imagine if you had Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, and then you got Calgary and Edmonton, that would be an interesting road trip. It really would. But then you would have to expand the, the NHL to uh, see the NBA and the NHL will have to expand from 30 to 34 teams for all of this to kind of take place. Um, I think another city for baseball is Las Vegas. I think Las Vegas should have all four majors. You think so? Yes, e yeah. Because I like, like I said the other night, I was watching Wrestling Money in the Bank at that new T-Mobile Arena. Nice and minty. Nice and minty. It's really, it's really good. Oh yeah, brand, brand it's new. Brand new. So what they're saying is they're open to have an NHL team or an NBA team. Bring a football team. Have the yeah. Raiders move from Oakland to either San Jose or Las Vegas, and, and bring, 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 bring a baseball team. Even though they have the Mets affiliate yeah. in Las Vegas, but bring a team there. That's gonna. That would be an appealing West Coast trip. I really like San Jose too. I think the fact bringing the Warriors there, um, you could bring oh, the Raiders there, the A's there, and then have the Sharks there. They and just you have quakes in the MLS. You could have well, just professional. Have oh yeah, beautiful stadium. Well, we'd like to keep talking about this, but we're running out of time, so we're running into the next segment of Shortened Season. So don't go anywhere. The Nicholas Gambaro Show will be right back. This is my teenage friend, Rachel. She's cool. Hey. Hey, could you watch the road? Hey, could you watch the road? <laughs> All right, well, if we die in a car crash, I want to donate my eyes to my neighbor, Gary. He has a boat, and he sails all around the world. I would love to see that. I don't know if he actually needs eyes, but who would turn on a free pair of eyes, right? <laughs> Who's that rich? Hello? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna for it. I'm just going the road. She can't do it? I mean, this is ridiculous. I, 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 I asked her to do it, and she said yes, and now she's back <laughs> out right now. Not only is driving with a cell phone dangerous, registration, please. Uh, it's illegal. Because of camp, I learned to make lasting friendships with people I still keep in touch with today. Because of camp, I learned about self-esteem. Because of camp, I play guitar. Because of camp, I am sending my kids to camp this summer. I learned that I was the best Tarzan yeller in the camp. <laughs> because of camp, I got a personality. Now I'm... <laughs> Because of camp, I turned out just fine. The New York Yankees have teamed up with the New York Blood Center to save lives in our area. There's nothing better than watching the home team knock one out of the park. Now we're hoping that you do the same. Join the team and hit a home run for our community by donating blood. One pint of blood can save up to three lives. And mean the difference between life and death for a neighbor. Call the number below or visit the website to schedule your time to give the gift of life. The New York Yankees, the New York Blood Center, and the whole community.
Welcome back to the Nick Gambaro Show. I'm Nick Gambaro alongside Emilio Ortega. Hello. And uh, we're going to get into now a very, uh, I wouldn't say heated topic, but a very interesting debate um, about shortened, shortened seasons. Um, you know, we all know the NFL, how short it is. And, you know, of course, it's supposed to be with what football players have to endure from week to week. But we really want to get into more of the other three sports, um, Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NHL. Because me personally, I feel like the seasons are a little bit too long, um, especially baseball. Um, what do you want? You want to start baseball, Emilio? Yeah, Let's baseball. Start there. Baseball right now, 162 game season is too long because you get you start in April and there's a lot of rain out. There's a lot of weather issues. I say let's go to n between 90 and 100 because at least you can start the season not in April, not in May. You could start it in June. And that way a lot of the focus would be on the NBA and the NHL. It would be great. Um, end the season maybe mid early to mid-September. Make the wild card the best two out of three. I would like that because then it makes it interesting. That way, it's not one and done for the wild card. Mm -hmm. Now, this could transition to the NBA and the NHL. I say this because the NHL starts in October and it ends in mid-June. So it's basically eight out of 10, eight out of 12 months a year, actually. <clears throat> um, and like right now, we learned the NHL schedule yesterday. The Rangers and Islanders open up against each other at the Garden October 13th. But the Cup Final would finish in early June. What I say for the NBA and the NHL is go to 66 games. You go to 66 games, unbalanced schedule, you play a lot more of your conference games, and you play less, less West games. Mm -hmm. um, you really make it interesting. That way, if you do 66 games, and if you do start in October, or in the NBA, you do start at the end of October, if you play 66 games, mm -hmm. you're done by mid to late May. Maybe early to, maybe early May. But with, with everything, and what I would do in the NHL and the NBA is cut down from eight teams in each conference and go by best record one through 16. Or, yeah, what what sixteen four? Just go four in each conference. You don't need to have half your league in the playoffs. It shortens the postseason as well. So I I think ninety two hundred games in baseball, and in the NBA and the NHL you go sixty six games. I agree with you for the most part, but a couple of things. Me personally, I like the MLB to be ninety games. You know, I'm a I'm root for the Mets. Um, I'm not that big into baseball overall, but you know, I'll watch the Mets, most of their games are from time to time, but it's very hard to get into the sport because it's so long, and it's kind of, you know, in, interfered, like you said, with the NBA and NHL playoffs, me as a soccer fan, there's soccer tournaments going on, or big games, so I focus on that more, the Stanley Cup playoffs and the finals more. So, me, I would wait, I agree with you, Emilio, wait till the Stanley Cup Finals and NBA Finals end, then you start baseball from, like, June and then through October. And then once that ends, you know, you can focus on football more, NBA and NHL. Although, with uh, the NBA and NHL, I think it should be even shorter. I think it should be 48 games, kind of like how the lockout season was in uh, 2013 with the NHL. I really enjoyed it. I think you're on edge every game. You're watching your team. You know, most every game does matter in a season, but there's 82. I mean, you could afford to slip up in a couple of games, but 48 games to me watching it as an Islander fan that year kind of seemed like, oh, we got to get a point out of almost every game. You know, and I don't know, it's more... I mean, I mean, hockey is exciting now, and I love it to death. 
but I think 48 games would even bring even more intensity to every game, and I like that. You know, not having to go to the West Coast. You know, to me, there's really no reason to play the West Coast teams. You could just play in your conference or in your division. Um, you could play, you know, let's talk about here locally, the Rangers, Islanders, Devils. You'll play them more often uh, than you normally would. It's now it's kind of like four or five times, so maybe they could go back to playing them six times, and you could play the Bruins more, the Canadians more, kind of, you know, some of the other original I, six teams. I think the issue with that is, if you get rid of from 82 to 66, the owners could deal with that because then what happens is, is they're losing, it, it, if it goes down to 48, they're losing revenue with that. That That's where I would, that, that's where yeah, I would say that 66 games is the minimum. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go lower than that, but I wouldn't go higher than that again. That, that's a good point because you know they're going to want to make money and they're going to want a lot of revenue coming in. But I just think having a January to June I think is a good time. It'll start it mid-January, kind of when the NFL Pro season is kind of winding down. People are still going to focus on that more, but at least it's towards the end. Like, let it make it start like maybe right before or right after the NFC and AFC Championship games. Um, and then do it all the way through June. And I like the 16 teams keep hockey postseason long. I love that. But I like your idea of the best record, 1-16. to 16. Yeah, but I think there, there's with half the league going in. And it's not just the NHL, it's just it's the NBA. NBA also, yeah. And you got half of your teams making the playoffs. Sure. What does that mean? So what it means is like if you go four and four in each conference, you value the regular season. Absolutely, and you know, going back to baseball, I think I think it would work 90 games. I mean, I know some people watch every single game of their favorite team. You know, I mean, credit to them. Me, I could never do it. I love the Mets, love them my whole life, but it's it's just too slow of a game to kind of have the patience to sit there and watch every single game, every inning. Again, that's me. Other people would argue with me, or and that's fine. You know, they can watch every game and you know that's that's all well and good I just think 90 games would improve it more I like the idea of making the wild card an actual series mm -hmm. I never I didn't say that yet I love that idea I think it's great you know and also too I just want to bring this up what do you think about adding more teams to the MLB playoffs no leave it as is Okay, so the wild card teams basically make it a series, and then as it normally is, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very. It's it's an interesting topic. It is, and you know, with the NBA too, you would do the same thing as mm -hmm. the NHL as yep. well. So Emilio, do you think uh, the NBA as well as the NHL and the MLB should have a wild card or no? The NBA should stay as is. The NHL, they have their wild cards, but I think I would cut it down, like I said, with the four team in each conference, I would go one wild card. Um, and in baseball, I would extend, instead of a playing game for the wild card, I would go best two out of three. Make it interesting if we're going to short. Okay, thank you, Emilio. You're welcome. And we'll be right back to wrap things up after this message. I learned to make lasting friendships with people I still keep in touch with today. Because of camp, I learned about self-esteem. Because of camp, I play guitar. Because of camp, I am sending my kids to camp this summer. I learned that I was the best Tarzan yeller in the camp. <laughs> because of camp, I got a personality. Now I'm... <laughs> because of camp, I turned out just fun. There are many arguments against the death penalty. It's not a deterrent against the crimes that it punishes. Society who use the death penalty don't have lower crime rates than those that do. When a country abolishes the death penalty, they are not plunged into criminal chaos. But even if the death penalty did reduce crime rates, would it then be acceptable?
Well, that is going to wrap things up here, but I want to thank Emilio Ortega for joining me. I want to thank all of you for watching at home, and if you like, you can go on Facebook and like the Nick Gambaro Show on Facebook, and uh, me and Emilio will see you guys next time. Take care. Check out Easy Access Math on YouTube. It's math made easy.